fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. When the first railroads were built into the western United States, the engineers and men were faced with a constant danger of attack by outlaws and Indians. And their task might never have been accomplished had it not been for the masked rider of the plains. It was his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, that blazed the trail for progress and finally made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of a great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! We're heading for town. There's going to be trouble. Oh, Silver! Fire! When the Lone Ranger and Tonto learned that Kimberly had left Cowago Canyon and headed back for Warren City, they raced after him. But although they were able to pick up his trail and follow it all the way to the hills on the outskirts of the town, the Easterner had too much of a start. It was long after dark when they reined up. Steady there, Silver. Oh, steady, oh, 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 fella. Steady. Oh. Uh, Kimberly, get to town ahead of us. We didn't lose his trail for a minute, though. We know where he is. Uh, Just because he failed at the canyon, we know that won't stop him. He'll find some other way to slow down the building of the railroad. Next time he try that, maybe we catch him. Once we get enough evidence to put him in jail, our work will be finished. Look down below, Kimosabe. Oh, there are plenty of people in town now. I've never seen it so well lighted. Maybe them open new cafe on Main Street. The lights aren't coming from the buildings. They seem to be in the street itself. Isn't that right? It looks like a torchlight procession. Ah. Better ride down there and have a look. Uh, you wear masks. We can leave Silver and Scott on one of the back streets and then keep to the shadows. There's plenty dangers. We've got to find out what's going on. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Hundreds of torches lit the main street of Warren City, but there was no procession. This was a meeting called by Saul Gardner. When he stepped out on the balcony of the Palace Cafe, a cheer rose from the rougher element of the town. <laughs> the storekeepers and most of the railroad men kept silent. Saul raised his hand and began to speak. Boys, three men were hanged today in Warren City. They were arrested by our sheriff, Bob Dixon. They were tried by Judge Carteret and a jury of 12 men. Everything was according to law. I'm not saying it wasn't. But I'm an honest, God-fearing man, and I didn't like the verdict. The men who were hanged were veterans of the Grand Army of the Republic. And Bob Dixon and Carteret were rebels in the war between the states. I'm asking you this now. How long are we going to stand for it? How long are we going to stand for rebels? Heisting themselves up to the seats of the mighty and judging the men who fought to save the Union. Why, I tried to speak this piece in court this morning. I was fined for contempt. But now I'm going through with it. And if Bob Dixon tries to interfere with my right of free speech, 
He'll pay the penalty we've always reserved for tyrants. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can't do anything about Carteret to grant you that. He's a federal judge and he's left the town. But Sheriff Bob Dixon's still here. Yes, Bob Dixon, one of the Dixons of Virginia. He's still wearing his badge and ruling the roost. That's something we can change. I can't do anything about it until the next election. It was Roger Manning, the editor of the Warren County Times, who had answered Gardner. He was standing in the second-story window of the newspaper building directly across the street from the Palace Cafe, and the crowd turned toward him as he spoke. You can't shut me down! If Charles Gardner has your right of free speech, so have I. Bob Dixon was elected sheriff of Warren City long before it became a railroad town. According to our laws, there won't be another election until November. And by that time, all of you gamblers and parasites and living off the railroad men will be gone from here. It'll be good riddance. It would be good riddance for the railroad in the town if we could drive you out now. So, God, you... You say you're an honest, God-fearing man. You can't deny it. I'll add to it. You believe in justice just as much as I do. There can be no justice when a rebel runs a town. That's prejudice talking. You're a mass of prejudice. It's disturbed your mind. Let yourself be fooled by outlaws and gunmen. There's only one principle at stake on war and city. And that's the principle of law and order. Bob Dixon's fighting for it. The men who are cheering you on are fighting against it. I'm no rebel. I never was. I was born in Massachusetts and I fought in the first volunteers. But I served on that jury today and I voted for hanging because those men were murderers. They were veterans. If they ever wore an army uniform, they stole it first. But that doesn't matter. It matters to me. They broke the law and they had to pay the penalty. You can talk until you're blue in the face, Manny. You tell them so. You can print whatever you want to in your own newspaper. But there's hundreds and hundreds of us here in Warren City that won't take orders from a Dixon from a Virginia. We're going to get rid of them. If we can't do it by legal means, then we'll try something else. That's final. You can warn him if you want to. He's got to turn in his badge or take the consequences. Hey! Steady, Silver. Oh, Hip. oh, God. oh. Uh, uh, oh. We may camp here, Tonto. Uh, uh, you, you will not say anything all the way from town. What do you think? Yeah, it's a bad situation. And um, that fellow man and... Talk good sense. Of course he did. When men are filled with prejudice, they won't listen. I'm afraid there's going to be trouble, Kimosabe. Not right. Maybe Kimberly helped make it. You can be sure of that. There's trouble in Warren City. It hold up railroad. You better get into town early. Find Kimberly and follow him. If he and Saul Gardner get together, ride back here as fast as you can. Ah, uh, time to do that. The following morning... Louise Gardner served her father's breakfast in silence. Uh, good flapjacks, Lou. Are they? Oh, what's the matter with my girl? Oh, Pa, I don't have to tell you. Mm. You mean last night? Yes, I do. You're so wrong. Nah, you don't become a woman to get mixed up in politics. That's just what it is, politics. It's a question of right and wrong. All right, and you're the one who's wrong. You can't make me believe any different. Bob Dixon's a good sheriff. He's never been unfair in his life. He couldn't be. He's the finest man I've ever known. He's a Virginian. What of it? That's so stupid, Pa. You're... You're so old-fashioned. Old-fashioned? That's what I said. Uh, you're taking his side against me. I've got to. He's a friend of mine. Well, I'm your Pa. But Bob's in the right and you're not. Young lady! If I ever catch you talking to Bob Dixon again, I'll, I'll lock you up in your room and keep you there. I want your promise. You won't get it. I'll have no part in fighting a civil war over again in Warren City. I'll lock you up. That just proves you're old-fashioned. Lou, I can stand so much. Now, don't get excited. It's bad for your digestion. I warn you. Besides, there's somebody at the door. If it's Roger Manning, I won't see him. Good morning, miss. What do you want? Want to see your pa. Who is it? It's that no good gambler, Ace Johnson. Shall I shut the door on his face and tell him to come in? What? (laughs) If you don't mind, Miss Lou, I should have mentioned I was expected. All right. 
You can come in. But there's no law that says I have to stay in the same room with you. And when a decent man gets mixed up with a crook, then he must be loco. <laughs> oh, I don't mind her. Women don't understand politics. Sure, I know. Got some good news, Saul. That's so? Someone else is on our side. Man that's got a lot of influence and money. Uh, who do you mean? He's in the back room of the palace. Wants to talk to you personal right away. Will you go over there with me? Why, sure will. What's his name? You're going to be surprised. It's John Kimberly. <laughs> You have a drink, Saul? I never touch it. <laughs> I wish I could say the same. Yeah, but you don't mind if I drink to your success, do you? No, sir. Well, then here's how. <laughs> well, now then. I heard your speech last night, and I agreed with every word. <laughs> That's fine. Manning is no better than a traitor. He sure sounds like it. And it's for Dixon. <laughs> the sooner you get rid of him, the better. But the only question is, uh, how? I can't answer that. Yeah, it won't be easy. There are plenty of men like Manning who want to keep him where he is. There won't be another election until November. And, well, that's too long to wait. It sure is. Well, then there's only one answer. You and your men must take possession of the town by force. By force? Ace tells me you have uh, three or four hundred. Well, he probably knows more about it than I do. Yeah, he does. You've picked a good lieutenant. I say give each one of them a rifle. Proclaim martial law and set up the kind of government you ought to have. Yeah, but three or four hundred rifles. Well, I can arrange What are you doing around here, Injun? Yeah, the door's open. Get out of here. <coughs> that door was open, Ace. Yeah, it's closed now. Uh, who was out there? Just an Injun, sleeping on the floor. You said you could arrange it, Kimberly. Uh, oh, yes, yes, the rifles. <laughs> I can get them to you in three days. The rest is up to you. Gardner say. Mm, that all Tonto here. Ace come along, make Tonto go. Force. Three or four hundred rifles. The sheriff's friends won't give up without a fight. We've got to do something to prevent it, Tonto. Ah. Oh, wait. You've got a plan? It may work. Saul Gardner wants to get rid of Dixon. We'll do it for him. What you mean? Let's go. We're riding back to town, city boy. Hip. On, Silver. Get him out. Come. When Louise Gardner walked into the sheriff's office, she found Roger Manning with the young lawman. Lou. Hello, Bob. I'm glad to see you, Miss Gardner. Do you know what this young idiot's decided? You let me explain it, Roger. Well? There's plenty of honest men in this town that don't want me to be sheriff anymore. Your father's one of them. It's going to make everything a lot easier if I just turn him a badge. Oh, no, now, Bob. Now, let me finish. Roger here was to take the job, or there wouldn't be any objections from anybody. You can't send me out chasing crooks at my age. There's no one who can fill the job half as well as you, Bob. I won't stand for your resignment. But, honey, don't you and see... And if you're thinking of me, you just forget it. I don't agree with Pa at all, and I've told him so. What we need is law and order, and you're the man to give it to us. But how can there be law and order when even the honest men are fighting against each other? And then there's a the railroad, too. Just think of that... Please! Hello, Pa. I told you it was her. We saw him from down the street. You know what I told you this morning? I remember. You're coming home with me now. And you're not going to leave the house again. Do you aim to carry me, Paul? Uh, well, if I have to. I might kick a little. Gee, who's that just read the button front? Oh, it's a mass man and an engine. Don't go for your gun, Bob. I got you covered. Outlaws in broad daylight. What's the idea? You're coming with me. You can try and make me. All right, if that's the way you want it. Hunter wants one cover. Let's go of me now. Let me down. You not no. move. Hey, Let's mass go. man, pick him up like he was a feather. Oh, Bob, somebody do something. He's got him on his horse. All right, Tonto. Ah, uh, Tonto, come. Well, don't just stand there. He's being kidnapped. This is your work, Gardner. That's a lie. And I'll prove it. Don't shoot, Paul. You might hit Bob. I don't care if I do. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto raced out of town with the sheriff as their prisoner long before any effective pursuit could be organized. They headed into the tangled wilderness of the hills above Warren City and did not draw rein until their camp was reached. Steady, Silver, steady, boy. Oh, fella. You can get out now, Bob. <coughs> oh, that was some ride. Steady. This is our camp. You're going to be our guest here for a few days. You a guest, huh? Yes. You won't consider yourself a prisoner. That is, after I've explained everything. Oh, I'm beginning to put two and two together already. Oh, are you? A masked man and an engine called Tonto. A white horse called Silver. You know, if you was to show me a ring like I heard Matt Kirby talk about, I could make a pretty good guess as to who you are. A ring like this? Yeah. Does it have a uh, secret compartment in it? Yes, it does. Just like Matt said. You're the Lone Ranger. Ah. Oh, but this is still going to take a lot of explaining. I'm not a bad sort of hombre. I've always tried to do my duty. I can't figure out how I got in your bad books. Oh, you haven't, Bob. You see, we were in town last night, and we heard everything. When uh, Saul Gardner made his speech? That's right. Me here, men in cafe scheme to take rifle. Well, those rifles won't be necessary. We took you prisoner to prevent bloodshed, and also to prove to the townspeople just how much they need you. I don't savvy. Well, the first thing I want is a list of all the honest men who dislike you because you come from the South. <laughs> There's a whole lot of them. The most important ones, then. Especially the ones who own stores or businesses. Oh, well, I, uh, I guess uh, Banker Henderson would come first. Good. I don't feel good about it. Go on. McNamara, Corwin, Bachelor. Oh, and then, of course, here's Saul Gardner himself. He owns the biggest store in town. Oh, that's fine. Don't you understand how I feel about it? I think so. You're giving all those men protection. And they don't realize what a good job you've done. It's up to us to make them. But how? By giving them a taste of what might happen with another man in your place. We'll, uh, we'll start with the bank. Huh? Tonto and I are going to hold it up tonight. You're going to... The Lone Ranger's going to hold up a bank? Now don't worry. No one will be hurt. The money we take will be just as safe here as in town. You say nobody will be hurt. What about you? Now we'll have to move fast, of course. I'll say you will. But it's worth the chance. After the bank, we'll pay calls on the others. We'll, uh... Save Gardner for last. Well, not all in one night. No, we'll take one night for each of them. Well, that's even worse. After the bank hold up, there won't be a man in town without a gun. They'll shoot first and ask questions afterwards. The only one we're afraid of is Matt Kirby. Matt Kirby? Well, he's the only one who knows you. That's just it. He might recognize us and tell the others who we are. We want these hold-ups to seem genuine. Oh. You'll, uh, you'll have to warn him in advance, Tonto. Uh-huh. His cabin's on the edge of town. You'll be able to reach it without being seen once it's dark. Not plenty easy. I'll wait for you near his cabin, and then, as soon as he's been warned, I'll, uh, we'll go to work. Early that afternoon, Ace Johnson called on Kimberly in his room at the hotel and described the capture of the sheriff. Then he confessed his bewilderment. How does it add up, Kimberly? Mask hombre was an outlaw, sure. He might have had it in for Dixon. But if that's so, why didn't he shoot him? It was awful risky taking him prisoner. What difference does it make? You, uh, you got what you wanted. How's that? Well, Dixon's gone. They'll have to appoint a new sheriff. You're smart, Kimberly. I figure I can lay my cards on the table with you. Yeah, go ahead. Well, it won't do us any good if they appoint somebody that's honest. Not even as honest as uh, you? As me? <laughs> Why not? We don't need those rifles now. It ought to work out fine. You could invite every gunman in the country to make his headquarters here. And you could collect from every one of them. Well, yeah, but It's I... Saul Gardner who'll have the most to say about the appointment. he listen to me, Ace. <laughs> I'd like to bet $10,000 you'll be wearing a badge before dark. <laughs> Ten o'clock that night, the Lone Ranger was waiting for Tonto outside of town. Steady, Silver. He's coming now. Hi, Kimosabe. Did you find Matt at home? Ah, uh, me tell him what you say. They're bad news. What kind of news? Ace Johnson, sheriff now. Railroad men not like that. You can't blame them. Matt's raid, town run wide open now. Plenty fight. 
Plenty of men get hurt. Outlaw steal from railroad. It isn't bad news, Tonto. It's good. Even if Ace weren't crooked, he's incompetent. That's going to make our job easier. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come Take a seat anyway, Sheriff. What? Oh, yeah. I'm not used to the new title. Now, the reason I've asked you to come over to the bank tonight is so that you can see for yourself how much we need in the way of protection. Uh-huh. This building was never meant for a bank. And you'd be amazed at the amount of money we have here. Is that so? It's because of the railroad, naturally. Now, I want a deputy on duty here day and night necessary, we'll pay a salary. Where do you keep all this money? And that safe over there? <laughs> Most of it. Why isn't it locked? Oh, I was just checking it over when you arrived. Uh-huh. I don't mind telling you that I'm worried. A masked man riding into town in broad daylight. It's disgraceful, huh? Uh, somebody at the door. Uh, that must be Roger Manning. Don't forget, I wasn't sheriff this morning. Don't make a sound up with your hands. What the... Inside. Uh-huh. Sheriff, it's the masked man. Oh, get him. Oh. Keep him covered, Tonto. We'll have to get out of here fast now. That's right. Got the safe open. Yeah, this will be enough. There's $50,000 in that bag. We'll take your word for it. Adios, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Sheriff, get after him. Oh, my get a posse together. Get that money back. Oh, You've got to capture that man. Lone Ranger and Tonto made good their escape. The posse that started after them lost the trail less than five miles from town. But when Ace returned, he appointed 20 new deputies to guard against another holdup. They roamed the main street throughout the next day and the following night. And yet, when morning came again... Sheriff! Morning, so. He's done it again. What's that? The back window of McNamara's store is wide open. Shows are safe, and it's empty. It's empty, I don't know. following morning. <laughs> ah, it's Corwin's place this morning, Sheriff. He took a thousand dollars. I'll get the polecat. He said that yesterday. The only trouble is he won't show up again. Oh, yes, he will. He left a note for you. Read it. Uh, to the sheriff. You can expect me at Gardner's store tomorrow night. At my place? Boy, the nerve of him. I'll have the store surrounded. I'll have 20 men there, 50. Careful, Ace. It might be a trick. I'll deputize every man in town. If he sets foot in it tonight, he'll never leave it alive. What time is it, Saul? Uh, just midnight. All right, boys. You got your orders. Saul and I are going to stay away in here in the store. Rest you spread out a little. Not too close, see? Keep undercover. Go on, then. Clear out. Uh, Roger may be right. That note may have been a trick. I don't think so. Shut the door. No. Shall I lock it? No. We've set the trap. Let them walk into it. We, uh, we don't want the lamp, do we? Hey, wait a minute. I heard something behind the counter. One of the boys. You. What are you doing back there? I'm taking the money out of the safe. I, I never saw him before. You know what? Who are you, anyway? Who told you to do that? I, uh... This is what I came for. Hayes, I recognize his voice. Only he isn't wearing a mask tonight. Just a disguise, Saul. Who are you? Careful, you're covered. How'd you get in here? I walked in with your men. It's a good thing there were so many of them. You ducked down behind the counter and... Found the safe was open, right. Now just stay right where you are. Don't make a move and don't raise your voice. You can't get away with this. As long as you're sheriff, it'll be easy. Adios, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Did you make it? Yes, I've got the money here. It's time for you to show up, Bob. Right. Hurry, before they get the posse rounded up. Get up there. Tell you, boy. Get, get you ride back to camp and leave this money to the rest, Tonto. Ah. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. You're a fine sheriff, eh? I'd like to know anybody who could do better. Well, I'll tell you. Bob Dixon. He would have been fooled the way you were. That's right. What? You admit it, Yes, sir. I admit it. 
I'd give every cent I got left if he were still wearing the badge. I heard that, Saul. Don't be so generous. Bob, hey, where'd you come from, boy? Well, I got away from the masked man's camp. Just follow me and I'll lead you there. <laughs> That's the way to talk. Come on, men. Follow Bob Dixon. Hey, yeah, follow me. Right over there by that rock is where you'll find the money. There's a mess, man. He's got away again. Oh, no, he hasn't. Here he comes through the woods. Don't any of you slap, Leather. That's the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? Have you gone local? Lone Ranger and outlaw? Yeah, he's no more of an outlaw than I am. Steady, Silver. Steady, boy. That's the same hombre. He's the one that took the $50,000 from the bank. I admit it. But you have the money back now. There's no harm done, is there? Well, no, but if you're the Lone Ranger, well, what, I what was the idea? The idea was to convince you, Saul and everybody like you, that you were wrong. You need Bob Dixon, and it doesn't make any difference where he comes from. It's time you forgot your prejudice because... because you're all Americans. You're all fighting toward a common goal. You've got to remember that united we stand, divided we fall. How about it, Saul? Have you changed your mind? I... you can bet I have, Masked Man. And so is everybody else who was talking the same way I did. That's all I wanted to hear. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Get him up. I'm Silver. Power. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>